Tonight, NBC4 investigates the ongoing rash of Kia and Hyundai thefts by young offenders and what happens to them if and when they face justice. The thefts have spread further across central Ohio communities. This year, the automakers unveiled software aimed at fixing a glitch that made those cars easier to steal. But an Associated Press analysis from seven major cities shows thefts are still growing despite the upgrades and security features that were offered. Juvenile court judges say this this hurts everybody. None of us want uh, either the public uh, to be unsafe as well as for youth to engage in behaviors that could have a negative impact on the community. So what happens to those young offenders after they enter the court system? We're dealing with a vicious legal cycle here. NBC4 investigates Jamie Ostroff wanted answers. She's here to show us how the system handles these cases and really whether it's making the community safer, Jamie. Right, and there are a lot of questions. There's a lot of secrecy surrounding the juvenile justice system, and that is by design. Children are protected by certain privacy laws in Ohio. So I sat down with Franklin County's lead juvenile judge and a former former offender to talk about what the system looks like from the inside. It's a dangerous problem. As soon as the car stopped, the girls got out with their hands in the air. Deputies say they were shocked to see how young they were. Three teen boys and one 19 year old girl were inside the car. We now know the 14 year old driver is a repeat offender. Between January 2021 and April 2023, 956 kids had stolen vehicle cases filed against them in Franklin County Juvenile Court. In our courtroom, as well as across the country, Country, we have seen the impact. Lachelle Stroud is the so lead juvenile judge there. She can trace the influx to videos on social media that show users how to steal cars. 248 stolen vehicle cases were filed in Franklin County Juvenile Court during the first four months of this year. That's exactly how many cases were filed in all of 2021. Because a lot of people in the community feel like that nothing is being done at all and that these youth are being arrested and then they're right back on the street within minutes and then in another car. And that is simply not true. Stroud says detaining a child accused of a crime is a last resort. One night in the what we used to call detention center, now we call it an intervention center. Just one night of a child being detained, wherever it is, whatever you call that facility, uh, decreases their chances of graduating from high school by 50%. Juvenile judges use this screening instrument to help them decide whether to detain a child, at least until they appear before a judge. It lists factors like outstanding warrants, the severity of the charge, prior offenses, and age. Stroud says it all boils down to this. Could I release this youth and know that, they're, that the community would be safe? So that's at the forefront of my mind. It also has to do with the safety of the youth. Do I think that that youth would harm himself or herself? Um, and is it best for them to be in the detention center? Franklin County has expanded its diversion programs to send fewer kids to the intervention center. The court uses more GPS ankle monitors than it used to, particularly for kids in stolen vehicle cases. And while the juvenile restitution program has been around for years, court officials say it's become a lot more common with the rise in vehicle thefts. And so we know that a lot of our families, but for programs like these, may not be able to pay restitution. It's not because the parents don't want to pay back whatever the victims are out, but it's just because they either don't have the means or the ability for their children to find jobs. The court partners with community service organizations where offenders can work for $10 an hour for up to 50 hours to pay for up to $500 in restitution. It's increased the amount of restitution that's actually paid. And the growing juvenile community enrichment services program provides offenders with specialists to keep them on the right track after they're sentenced. What we formerly called as probation, we now have specialists who act more as coaches uh, for the youth and develop a case plan based on the individualized needs of that youth and family. So to know that you have another adult who is supportive and genuinely wants to help you, uh, I believe that it's had a great impact on the youth as well as making sure that we decrease the recidivism rates as well. 
Now, just under two thirds of kids charged in stolen vehicle cases are detained. Judge Stroud says overall filings, not just for those stolen vehicle cases, are down. She says recidivism is down as well. Just over a third of the offenders since January 2021 were charged in more than one stolen vehicle case. But how do offenders who have actually been through the system feel about whether it works? So I actually used to be one of those kids. I used to think like, hey, I could do this. I'm not going to get caught. Like, so let's do this. And when I went to jail, whole different story. That is 21 year old Alejandro Rodriguez. He spent nearly two years in detention and in one of the programs you just learned about from Judge Stroud, how he says the system worked for him, but not everyone tonight on NBC 4 at 6.